next to you, starstruck. An internet famous celebrity, fake dating, apartment neighbors, alternate universe, fan fiction, chapter 11. <laughs> it's the day before Marinette's birthday, but that's when she has a real celebration with her friends. In past years, she had celebrated on her actual birthday. The reason she wasn't doing it this year was because Adrienne had texted her and asked her and requested that she kept the day open. Myrna had been hesitant about switching the days, but Adrian was practically begging her. He insisted that he had an entire day planned out for her. So here she was on a Wednesday, giggling with Aoya, Tiki, Julika, and Krista, very much tipsy. Her eyes are spinning a little and her cheeks are definitely flushed pink, but it's fun and she enjoys herself just talking loudly with the friends in the far corner of the restaurant. I just can't believe that Adrian managed to sneak you away from us on your 24th birthday. Alia complains. She's been voicing that same irritation almost the entire night. From the first bite of food to the most recent sip of wine. It's blasphemous, really. Complete crime. Tiki giggles and sways. If Marinette was in a more sound state of mind, she would have noted the informal behavior. But then again, Tiki is out with her today as a friend, not as a manager. He has an entire special day prepared for her. Of course she'll want to know what it is. Oh, Marinette just can't resist her boyfriend, Krista teases, leaning in towards her. Marinette rolls her eyes and pushes her away. He just seems so hopeful, Marinette defends herself. I don't want to tell him no. Mm, who could ever say no to puppy dog eyes? Certainly not you. Or maybe I should say cat eyes, since you spilled that little story, Julika laughs. She is perhaps the best at holding her liqueur, and Marinette envies her ability to stay still. She herself is also swaying side to side. Oh yes, me too. I love knowing all the juicy details that Lila Rossi will never get. But God, she... She'd pay a million euros for a single drunk dinner with you, Krista laughs, point, pointing out that little fact. Tipsy, Tiki points out. Tipsy dinner. I'm not letting this girl drink too much. Alia snickers into her glass. Can't say the same for you, Alia teases her. Tiki scoffs in the most polite way one could do. In the most polite way one could polite way one could, and Marinette's not quite sure how Tiki manages it. How on earth do you always sound so polite and perfect? You're like, uh, one of those regal queens that have the posh accents, only you don't have a different accent or a crown on your head. Marinette wonders aloud. Everyone except for Tiki is laughing their heads off. Tiki looks down and smiles with hints of red on her cheek. It just barely matches her hair. See? You're all color coordinated now. Perfect! What'd I tell you? Marinette motions. Alia is roaring now. <laughs> no, please, <laughs> Tiki says with a giggle. And I think it's time for you to be cut off. She pushes a glass of ice-cold water towards Marinette. Drink it, she says, akin to how Marinette's mother used to force her to drink water when she was sick. She eyes it suspiciously, before taking a sip. Tiki nods contently. Shut up, Marinette, Krista says, making Marinette finish the glass, despite the side eye. You've got a special day tomorrow. There's a mischievous glint in her eyes that Marinette can register. 
even in her slightly tipsy state. Good morning. Adrian is far too cheery at eight in the morning. And though Marinette usually gets up a little before seven to get ready for work, her head is currently spinning and she had stayed up a little bit too late with her friends the night before. Can I come in? He's standing right in her doorway with a big smile and already dressed for the day's activities. Marinette is still yawning in her big two baggy pajamas and her brain is still pretty fogged. Yeah. Come in, she welcomes, leaning onto the door frame for onto the door for support. Adrian cracks a laugh at her and grabs her by the shoulders, holding her upright until they get to her couch. She collapses on it. Adrian smiles at her as he sits down. I'm kinda tired, she yawns. Adrian nods. I've noticed, he says cheekily. Marinette flickers her eyes open to lightly push his arms. <laughs> I'm just joking, but the plans I have for today aren't really time specific, so we can stay here until you want to actually get up. It's your birthday after all, he says kindly. Marinette pulls herself upright and squeezes her eyes. Thank you. I will probably be awake in about 30 minutes or so, give or take, she says. I'll go make some, uh, coffee. Marinette starts to get up when Adrian pushes her back down. She pouts at him, but he only laughs. I'll make it. Coffee is one of those few things I'm able to do by myself. and always happen. I'm, well, okay, it's, at least it's one of the few things I was able to sneakily learn by myself. He laughs. Marinette turns and leans on the back of the couch, watching sleepily as Adrian walks over to her coffee maker. How do you like your coffee? He asks. Marinette hums, thinking about just how nice Adrian is being for making her coffee just so she didn't have to get up. Drip with two tablespoons of honey and one of the creamer. She points vaguely to where the creamer and honey are. Wow. This is the flavored stuff, Adrian comments as the coffee machine begins to spew. My dad's assistant had the hazelnut flavor in our office growing up. That's what I'd sneak into my room. I don't think I like the hazelnut flavor much, though. But it was all I could have at the time, Adrian admits with a faraway look on his face. Marinette nods, listening to his story. Mm, you can buy your own flavoring now. Adult living in your own house, jurisdiction and all that, she points out. Adrian nods back at her. That's true. He continues making her coffee. When they get back to her home, Marina doesn't think Adrian can do anything else to top the day. She now understands why he was he so desperately wanted her to push her plans back with her friends a day forward. She felt like a spoiled princess with all of his gifts. I have one more thing for you, Adrian announces as he sets down her bags on the countertop. Marinette had insisted that she didn't need the dress or the bag or the hair clip or the shoes, but Adrian quite literally would not take no for an answer and bought them all for her anyways. It did make her panic. She knew the prices the items were listed at, but Adrian kept track of every single item that she that caught her eye or that she showed interest in and swooped in to buy it without another word. She didn't like to think of herself as materialistic, but there was something heart melting about the fact that Adrian wanted her to have everything that she liked. Another thing, dear God. How do you not run out of ideas? Marinette laughs, about to faint. Adrian is showering her with the world and she's not quite sure how to accept it. Yeah, I had to think long and hard about this day, he admits. How long? She questions, tapping her foot and raising a brow. Adrian ducks down sheepishly. 
since Alia spelled your birthday, he mutters. Marinette lets out a laugh. You, she cries out, but not with anger. She only laughs and clutches her stomach. That was so long ago. You are far too kind for this earth, she says with a smile. Adrian lights up at her words, like a Christmas tree. He cocks his head to the side and smiles. I just want to make sure you have a great day, he explains, motioning to all the bags on the table. Marinette laughs and rolls her eyes. Yes, I see that, she teases him. But it already feels like it's my wedding day. You don't have to do any more. Actually, you did have to do any of this. A handmade card would have also sufficed, she says. Adrian shrugs. I wanted to I wanted it to be more than that though. You put up a lot you put up with a lot for me and you're my first real friend in the real world. I I think you deserve it all, he tells her honestly. Marinette's heart swells with his words and he she has to push down the adoring sighs. Adrian is so genuine about it all. He's bashful about how much time and money he's putting into her, but has a good-natured reason. Marinette wonders for a brief second that if they were actually to date, would he be like this? Or would he be about ten times as much? I just wanted to show you that. I just wanted to show that to you. Show how much I appreciate that. Adrian admits shyly. So I came up with the entire agenda and... I'm just happy that you've liked it so far. He clutches his hands together nervously. Marinette blinks at him. Go big or go home, I suppose, she jokes. Adrian howls with laughter. Though, your home is right next door, so I don't believe that would accomplish much, she says thoughtfully. That's true, Adrian chuckles. But come on. I do have to go home. I gotta grab your your last gift from my apartment. Adrian smiles and motions for her to follow him. She does. Then he emerges from his apartment after a minute of wrestling, with a basket in hand and a grin on his face. Marinette raises a brow at him questioningly, but he just shrugs it off handedly. Adrian leads her up the stairs and to the open rooftop of their apartment building. What are we doing? Marinette says with a slight laugh. Adrian flashes her a smile. I like this rooftop a lot. I think the view is pretty nice and it's breezy, Adrian says, brushing off the question, much to Marinette's amusement. A flash of color attacks Marinette's vision, and she realizes that Adrian's laid out a picnic blanket and basket. On her face, a smile breaks out, and she, and she laughs a bit. This is the end of her perfect birthday. A picnic watching a pretty sunset. Marinette thinks that she could never be happier. I came out here right when I moved in. It was a magical experience, honestly, looking out at the entire city, or at least a fair amount of it. It's pretty free. And cool, don't you think? Adrian asks looking away from the sunset to Marinette. She bites her lip, but nods back. Definitely, her heart is pounding loudly, and she's genuinely surprised that Adrian can't hear it. Can I look in the basket? She asks impatiently. He nods, and she opens up the basket, pulling out dinner. It's a surprisingly nice pasta salad with crispy acidic garden salad. It's a surprisingly nice pasta dinner with crispy, acidic garden salad. Oh, wow, this is so nice, she exclaims, covering her mouth and a, and a wide smile. Come sit down, Adrian says, waving his, arm, his hand over. Mar Marinette comes to sit cross-legged next to him, digging right in. She has no idea if he made the pasta or catered it, but, oh, gods, it was just amazing. 
Meredith has been in an eternal heaven all day, and it is just all the best. They chat, watching as the sun slowly creeps down and explode with beautiful colors. Red, blue, purples, yellows, and oranges. The cool breeze kisses her arms and flies her hair away from her face, on the occasion blowing it right back into her face, much to Adrian's amusement. Marinette will tr would try to pull it back, but failed miserably. Adrian found it hilarious. Ooh, ooh, this one is funny. Adrian aggressed a new girlfriend. Break up? Marinette laughs, thrusting the phone into Adrian's face. He drops his own to his lap and reads it over the exaggerated article. He swipes through. Last Sunday. Superstar model Adrian Agrest is caught by photographers who spotted them at blah, 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 whatever. Since, since that day, they hadn't been spotted together since, even though Marinette seems to have very clearly been in town, venturing in and out, making connections with young fans of her lover, blah, blah, whatever. Could the hottest couple of this century already be over? Fans speculate the availability of this supermodel gone rogue, Adrian mutters, reading through the article. He stops, breaking out in hysterical laughter. Wait, no, look, this one, this one is the best. Adrian cries out. Marinette wipes the tears that sprouted from laughter. I know, right? I mean, we don't have to be attached at the hips to be dating. It's fine if we're not always out on public dates for the media to see, Marinette laughs. Wait, look, this one, look. Adrian hands her his phone. Marinette looks for the clickbait title. Adrian Agress, a new girlfriend, a secret affair for years? Baby Agress, <laughs> what on earth? Marinette says, totally shocked. I didn't even know it was you, like, when we met three months ago. How on earth are we supposed to have a child for years? <laughs> I love the writers of these so-called stories having no sense of time. Marinette laughs. They aren't even trying for anything creative, Adrian complains. Just the basics. They have kids, they broke up. Come on, guys, be interesting, he says with a laugh. Marinette squints at him. No, I think that's interesting enough, she objects. Adrian defeatedly nods. I guess you're right. We don't need a bunch of terrible rumors, he admits. We certainly don't. It's hours later. When, Mar when they finally get off the rooftop, and Adrian walks her to her door. Marinette had lamented that it didn't really matter because they were quite literally neighbors and next to each other. Still, Adrian insisted he do it because it was polite. It was barely an extra four steps, but he took them. Marinette waved him goodbye at her door and had the strongest urge to kiss him goodnight. She had, re had to refrain herself from doing so, though. They were fake dating. There was no point in having some kind of physical affection for no one else to see. But, good God, she wanted to do it. Marinette slides down her wall, not the one connected to Adrian's apartment, and sighs. I think I really like him, she admits to no one but herself. It's her own secret confessional. A little too real to pretend not to, she whispers. Adrian is sweet and caring and a gentleman and fun and completely understanding of everything. How could she not fall for him? Marinette wasn't sure how she convinced herself it wouldn't happen at the beginning of all this. Should she clear the air, tell Adrian the truth so they both will know? Even though the entire point of this stunt was not to let anyone know the truth, she, she had no idea what she was supposed to do. But Marinette decides to keep quiet. Eventually, they'd break up, 
and mostly will remain good friends. And the feelings will eventually drift away because his attention is off her and their lives will become busy. It'll be fine, she tells herself. She is only about 80% certain that that statement is true. <laughs>